All right. Some of that edited. Good. Got some people already on. Hello, everybody. Um, this is the real Raven Knight calling at you. Can everyone hear me okay? Because I know we had some problems with the audio last time. I think I fixed my headphones, so now I think we should be good. Everyone can hear me all right? Yes. Good. That's what I wanted to hear. All right. So, today... We are going to be talking about the Samurai of Amaku. You know, it's a funny thing, guys. I, I, I just want to say this. I got my minor in college with Asian studies, particularly in Japanese history and culture. And so when I came into doing this channel, I thought I was going to do a lot of samurai talk. And I haven't. I've done far more on the nights than I have anything else. And I feel a little bad about that because I know a lot about Japanese culture and history. But I don't talk about the samurai nearly as much as I feel like I should. I kind of shove them to the side a little too much, if you ask me. So today, I'm kind of excited to actually talk about the samurai um so this will be a lot of fun so i hope y'all are excited first let's talk for a little bit about how i've broken down uh the samurai of amaku so the mire is basically run by what they call the dawn empire but in Japan, the Empire of Japan was broken up into several territories, several provinces and um, feudal areas. And so that's how I kind of see the Meyer broken up into several little feudal territories. And the feudal territory that I'm dealing with, that I created, was Amaku Province. Now, the Amaku Province would be located, if you look on the map, as you can see on my screen, it would be pretty close to where that jack-o'-lantern is with the purple flames coming out of it on the, uh, the, on the farthest to the right. On the farthest to the right, that one that's really close to the edge, it'd be very close to that territory. Maybe where the windmill is right underneath it. So if you can see that on your screen, that's about where Amaku is located. Um, so that's Amaku province. Um, before I get started, I will answer this question because it was a good question that you just asked. I'm Kevin Ramirez. Um, thank you for asking. Um, what is your opinion on Shadversity? Okay, there are three major historical YouTubers that got me inspired to start this channel. They are Shadversity, um, Skullgrim, or Skullgrim, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and Metatron. I think Shadversity is my favorite of those three. I think Shadversity is very upfront, very friendly, very fun to watch. He's very entertaining and usually pretty accurate in everything that he says. At least I've never had. I've never watched one of Shadversity's videos and gone, dude, I have to disagree. I usually agree with a lot of what he says. And even when I don't fully agree, I see where he's coming from. Skullgrim is really cool because I love his demonstration videos. I love how he demonstrates how the weapons are used and how effective they'd be. That's very cool. Um, I also think that he's also very knowledgeable. He looks at things from a very unique perspective. Metatron is the only one that I'm not a big fan of. It's not because he doesn't know his stuff. He definitely does. Metatron is a very, very intelligent person and very well studied, but he's got an ego that just turns me off to him. You know, it's just, it, it, I watched one of his videos. I wanted to see his video on Samurai Honor. He spent the first like five minutes of the video just talking about how uneducated people throw hissy fits about this and how these people need to get better educated. I'm like, save that preaching for somewhere else. I want you to talk to me about Samurai Honor. Honor. Don't talk to me about how and it. Um, so honestly, and again, I'm not saying the Metatron is unintelligent. Far from it. He's definitely far more educated than I am. He knows more about Japanese culture and history than I do by a long shot. But there is a correct way to portray information. I could have a really great professor who knows all their stuff, but if they just keep on talking about their credentials rather than tell me about what needs to be told, I lose interest. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the Samurai of Amaku. And like usual, we're going to go into a breach map so that that way I can be doing something while talking, because otherwise I'll just get bored. Chang Pass, okay. And we're going to play... 
oh who to go let's go Kensei first since we're starting by talking about Kensei okay I have not seen Scola Gladiatoria um, alright so very first thing that I want to talk about is the Kensei who runs the province and that is sorry <clears throat> That is Nakano Tomoe. Tomoe is the daimyo of Amaku province on the northeastern side of the Meyer. Now, Amaku is generally a peaceful territory because it's not close to any of the major action. And so because of this, Tomoe is kind of considered the weakling daimyo because she doesn't have to be on the front line all that often. And she doesn't really get to engage in battle all that much. Mostly what she does is she sends reinforcements from her province to help back up other places. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't because Tomoe is actually weak. Far from it. She's a good friend of the emperor. Um, she's very well trusted. She was given that territory by imperial decree she's a good leader but she just doesn't get to see very much action and that makes her uncertain about herself she feels like ah, am i really good enough to be daimyo am i really um strong enough am i battle hardened enough do i deserve the status of daimyo well she finally gets her chance when the orcs attack when the orcs attack the emperor finally decides okay this is becoming a bit of a problem tell me what you're going to do is you're going to take your army and go down to the province of Don Yoku, which is close to um, Ashfeld, and you're going to reinforce um, the province of Don. Yo you're going to reinforce the province of Don Yoku and help out the daimyo there named Kureto Jube. You're going to help him out, and you're going to um, let him end that fight with the Iron Legion, so that y'all can work together to fight these Greenskins. So she heads down there. But when she gets down there, she finds out that Kuroto Jube has been up to something pretty illegal and dishonorable in the Dawn Empire. So they get into a duel, and Tomoe wins. She actually wins the duel. This leads to Kuroto Jube being dishonored, and she and he loses his province. He loses Don Yoku province. So the Emperor gives Tomoe not only um, her own province, but Don Yoku as well. And when she takes Don Yoku, she says, okay. I'm now going to use all these forces, the forces of Amaku and the forces of Donyoku, turn it all into one Amaku province, and then I'm going to use this large army to help take the fight to the orcs as the emperor wants. So she's a very strong leader, but she has a big issue with self-confidence. She feels like, can I really be the leader I deserve to be? Can I, can I earn the emperor's favor rather than just be, you know, the weakling daimyo? So that is the Kensei Nakano Tomoe. All right, so any questions so far? Raven, can I join or will that? Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I wish I could let you join, but when my brother tried to join the first time we did this, it just lagged so hard it kicked me out of any of the matches. I would love to game with you guys sometime, so if y'all ever see me online or know my pen and see me online and want to join me in a game, I don't mind you joining me, but when I'm live streaming, I'm just worried that it'll lag too much and that'll be bad. I'm sorry, guys, so not right now. But in the future, I don't mind gaming with you guys. I really don't. Because I sometimes just game for fun. Sometimes I'm just game to get footage or game for fun. So, uh-oh. Uh, let me deal with you, and then I'll talk about the Orochi. And... Ah, oh, you dodged it. I thought I'd get her. Oh my, you... I'm out. Ah, oh, dang it. Okay, um, other things. Um, the Conqueror and the Val... Oh, okay, yeah, I'll talk about that. Uh, this is not actual lore for the game. This is for the story. Is her name spelled Tomoe like that one, like that one Japanese god? Um, she, it is, it is Tomoe. So T O M O E. When does this story take place during the Foreigners timeline? I know it's before the Horkos. No, it's actually after Horkos. This story takes place after the Horkos incident. Um, I forgot to talk about Conquer and Valkyrie's uh, relationship. I'll do it real quick, then I need to get back to the samurai. Okay, so real fast. I didn't talk about this, and I should have. My fault. Okay. The Conqueror Rodin, that's his name, he actually was put in charge of guarding the Valkyrie Aella when she came to the Noble Legion to parlay to, you know... Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Huh. So silly of me. When, he, when she came to parlay with the Noble Legion, he was put in charge of guarding her. Well, while guarding, they 
got into talking, they got into a conversation, and she reveals to him, no man has ever beat me in one-on-one combat. And if you remember why, it's because anytime a man fights her in one-on-one combat, it's because they want to earn her hand in marriage, and she don't want none of that crap. I'm going the wrong way again, aren't I? Oh my god, I'm so focused on talking that I'm not even thinking about the game. I'm just running in circles right now. Come get me, everybody! So when he learns that she's never, um... Excuse me, get out of my way. Um, so when he's learned that she's never lost to a man, he decides, ooh, that's interesting, how strong are you? So I'd like to fight you. So they get into a little bit of a fight, a tussle, get serious, and he ends up winning. He actually beats her. And she's amazed. She's like, no one has ever done that. And he goes, I guess you've never met a man quite like me. And she admits, no, I don't think I have. And so she gets kind of smitten with him. She kind of falls for Rodin. And Rodin, he, he likes her. He, he doesn't know if it's love, but he likes her. He just doesn't know how to respond to it. Rodin um, has never really thought about romance off the battlefield. He's always kind of just been this tough guy who's ready to go out and fight for king and country and never really worry about romance after the fact. So he doesn't know. How do I, how do I associate these feelings? Am I in love or am I just, you know, hungry? <laughs> so that's Rodin for you. A Rodin and Valkyrie's relationship. I hope that answer cleared up some stuff for you guys. Now y'all officially know the relationship between uh, Valkyrie and Conqueror. Uh, let me get rid of this Warden. Warden, sweetie. No, no, sweetie. No. Dang it, Minion! Okay. So, back on to the samurai. So next let's talk about the Orochi, Takashi Kido. Takashi Kido is one of the finest Orochi Tomoe has ever known, and he is a very loyal vassal to her. He works hard, he earns her favor, he'll do anything she asks him to. Spy on an enemy, kill a man, and she, he, would, he even offered to kill his own sister if it would help Tomoe's goals. Um, so, he, his loyalty is never in question. He also has some connections to the Shin to the League of Shinobi, to the Shinobi orders out there. So he's very good at getting information from across the mire. Like Shinobi are kind of planted throughout the mire. They kind of just gather information and uh, get, sell it to the highest bidder, but somehow Kido knows how to contact these people. He knows how to get in touch with the Shinobi. So quite often, he can get Tomoe very informed. That's how Tomoe knew that the orcs were real, because the Shinobi were feeding him this information. You know, like, he, when, when she heard rumors about orcs, he could verify. He's like, yeah, I've heard this from the Shinobi themselves. You know, that it's real stuff. So he's very well informed. But the problem with Kido, the big problem with him, get ready for this, guys. He is... He's loyal to the point of disloyalty to anyone other than Tomoe and the Emperor. And what I mean by that is, during one of the fights with the, during one of their skirmishes with the orcs, Night Warden William asks Kido to lead a small regiment of his men to flank the orcs and buy them some time. Kido tells him to his face, and I quote, I don't take orders from Western savages. Tomoe had to give him the orders herself so that he would follow them. And he was very unapologetic. She didn't even bother saying, you apologize, young man. No. He's like, I'm not going to apologize. He's not worth my time. Only Tomoe or the Emperor can command me. So he is a loyal, loyal servant, but that also means that he's not going to take crap from anybody else other than the people he's already sworn fealty to, if that makes sense. And before y'all ask, yes, the color of Amaku province is red and gold. So if y'all want to make samurai of the Amaku province, just give them uh, kind of what I have on Tomoe right here. I think it's called Sunwine. The color is called Sunwine. So that would be a good color. All right, so let's read some questions. Um, what is funny is the fact that the samurai would be least, uh, least out of character in yelling for the emperor, while even the knights would be odd even saying anything about an emperor. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, will there be a Hitakiri? Yes, Hitakiri's coming last, so I'm saving her for the end. Yeah, but what about the Great Empire? That's where the scents and glads came from. Um, uh, oh, you're still talking about yelling for the emperor? Um, since the, imp since the Great Empire is no longer around anymore, I don't know if they'd yell that. Aw, oh, man, Gladiator. No, no. Don't hit me. He hit me. 
You're not being nice, Gladiator. Oh, shoot. Ah, uh, man, I'm outnumbered and outgunned. Oh, no, no, no. Dead. Okay, so, um, do the knights believe in orcs to be Satan's minions, Vikings, Hells, Monsters, and Samurai Yokai, respectively? At first, they all have their opinions about where they come from until it is revealed to them later what they are. Yeah, in fact, the, the Inquisitor's Acolyte will actually explain it all to them, but I'm not going to spoil too much about that. Hello, Raven. It is I, the Warmonger main, that helped you with combos. Wait, seriously? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. I remember that now. Yes, I remember that now. The Great Empire is around. They're just west of Ashfell, I believe, and decided to support the Knights. Apollyon mentions meeting them, too. Most of the Knight structure are of ancient Empire origins. Okay, well, maybe that's the lore. I don't know. Will there be lesser-seen story characters like Sejiro, Stone, Dominate? No, they will not be there. I have not added them. I don't want to get copyright stricken by Ubisoft. Okay, so, if that's all the questions about um, the Orochi... We can move on to the next one. Back a little. How are you today, gamer, the Mighty Midget? I'm fine. I'm, I'm doing okay. After a very long and very difficult week last week at work, I am feeling much better because my work schedule's a little bit less crazy. I had four doubles last week. I was exhausted. And I had a double last night, so I was pretty worn out. Heal, I got him. Oh, Gladiator, no you didn't. No, you don't. Oh, no, no, no. Bad, bad Gladiator. Bad Gladiator. No, dang it. Okay. Since this is after Horkos, Sejiro's dead anyway. Executed for treason. Damn, Horkos. Anyway. Okay, so the next hero is the Shugoki. The Shugoki Pokey. His name is Otomo Yoshikage. Now, Otomo Yoshikage started out as just an average kid, you know, he grew up in Amaku province, he was a pretty decent lad, you know, he did his homework, he brushed his teeth, that kind of kid. Until his parents die in a Viking raid. Yeah, both of his parents were killed in a Viking raid, and he, uh, he had nowhere else to go. So he decided that the one thing that he could do is be strong enough so that he would be able to live on, honor their memories, and get some revenge on those Viking savages. So he trained himself as a Shugoki. He becomes large, strong. He trains himself so that he could lift um, quite a lot of weight. In fact, the dude... Ah, oh, crap. Ah, uh, uh, this ain't looking good. Okay, thank you guys. Um, but the dude worked his hardest so that he would never have to lose anyone else. And he swore fealty to Tomoe once he became a um, Shugoki. Now, here's where it get No, gotcha. I feel better now. So here's what's cool, though. Unlike Kido Takashi, Otome is actually... He's actually pretty noble. He'll actually fight for people who aren't just as daimyo as long as it's for the betterment of everybody. During the during one of their greater battles, Helen the Warmonger is thrown off of her horse by an orc attack, and before she can get killed while on the ground, Otomo runs in and defends her, holding off the orc himself. And it's shown that his strength is comparable to the orcs. The dude's a freaking tank. So you will actually see a Shugoki go one-on-one -on -one against an orc. It should be fun. And I will show, and I will try to show what he looks like before we're done with the stream. Come on. Come on, Glad. Come on, Glad. Gotcha. Kill this minion, and we're done. Come on, guys. Help me take this zone. Come on. Damn revenge. Home stretch, boys. Let's wrap this up. Here, I'll give you an honorable death. All right, so. Am I late? No, you're not too late. 
my main let's go not at all he kind of just started the orochi definitely isn't a team player it's not his home team right batman goki <laughs> batman goki <laughs> maybe i should have named him bruce bruce yoshikage he's gonna have himself a bat symbol give him the bat special effect right um I hate how female Kensei doesn't say that voice line on that execution. She does, it's just so quiet you can barely hear it. Why are you ignoring me, Gladiator? Heal up. Oh! Nusha, I didn't even mean to block that, but I am so glad I did. Ah, uh, gosh. Yes, got him. Dang it. Um, Definitely Batman, Goki, Dead Parents, Noble, and Fights for Peace and Justice. Batman with a big stick. We need Fem, Goki, and Fem Boy Nobushi. Uh, not so big on the Fem Boy Nobushi, but if that floats your boat, go for it. Okay, so. Male Kensei still sounds cooler, in my opinion. Literally, testosterone. And, well, the reason I made um, my uh, Kensei a girl in this case is because I already have a leader for the knights who's a male and the leader for the um, Vikings who's a male. So, needed some female in there. Just thought it'd be fun. Okay, so... Oh, get him up, get him up, get him up, come on, man. Dang it! You ruin everything, Gladiator. This is why you're my least favorite hero. Oh man, I hate when I'm teamed up on on all four sides. Come on, try that again. Try that again. I dare you. Nope. Try again. Get him! Get him! <laughs> Femboy Nobu. That that's gonna be a thing from now on, isn't it? Femboy Nobu. I don't know how I feel about that. Come on, guys. Team up on that commander. Uh, okay, so next up, we will talk about the Shinobi. I want to talk about the Shinobi real quick, because there's not a lot to say. The Shinobi's name is uh, Kirikage. Um, that's not their real name. It's a name they're using. Oh, come get off it, Gladiator. It's a name they're using. He's just a spy. His basic job is to send information to Tomoe and to the warriors and let them know what movements the um, orcs are making. Let's pick these boys up. We see him only a few times in the story when he's giving information, and he might just shiv an orc in the back, but he really doesn't show up a lot through the story. He never even reveals his name to anybody. It's just established that Kido knows him. Come on. Oh, no. Not cool. Not cool. Got him. Okay. I have joined the Discord the other day. It took me forever to get the link to work. Yeah, I'm not. St I'm still not very good with the Discord stuff. How did you... How do you be a spy against the orcs? Does he paint himself green and yell, wah, a lot? Well, he doesn't infiltrate by looking like them. He just sneaks around and... Gets information from the tree line, I guess. I don't know. Uh, there is someone you could ask, though. I will parry you all day. Why don't you ask Gaijin Goomba how he did it? Because according to Gaijin Goomba, Jesus didn't Jesus didn't walk on water. Then Shinobi figured out how to do it, and <laughs> somehow Jesus stole it. Uh, every, people always make up stuff about the ninja that I just can never stand. Okay. Shrek Nobi, I like that. Shrek Nobi. All right. So. But yeah, that's essentially all there is of the Shinobi. There's not a lot to my boy Shinobi um, in the story. He's only going to show up a few times, and they're not going to be that big of a deal. Will the Wulin be in the story much? They will. And I'll do another live stream dedicated to the Wulin. Not a lot of questions on the characters, though. I'm not. It's not a bad thing. It's just surprising. 
Before I go into the next match, I might as well show y'all what some of these characters look like since I won't be playing all of them. So let's see. You've of course seen what Tomoe looks like. This is what Kido Takashi looks like. This is what Kirikage looks like. And this is what Otomo looks like. The big boy. Ah, yes, this is my Shugo. So all of you who are Shugo mains out there, this is my Shugo key. How would Brogoki, Law Daddy, and Raider act and interact? Uh, you'll see that more in the story. Yeah, my my my, my boy Otomo looks like a freaking unit. He sure does. So, how important are these people to the story? Uh, most of them have a lot to deal with. Like, for example, um, Tomoe is going to have a huge role. Night Warden William is going to have a huge role. Um, the Nobushi, who I'll go into in a minute, will have a huge role. We we've got a lot going on. So um, I will play as Nobushi next, just for the fun of it. But here's what the Aramusha looks like, so that you can see. This is Jubei. And this is Kiku, the Hitakiri, just in case we don't get to her. Now, back in the breach so we can talk about Nobushi. Uh, will Bork ever praise someone other than his own? Will Orochi ever praise someone other than his own team? No. In his mind, no one else is worth praising that much. Um, Love the fox mask on Hito. Thank you. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about Nobushi, because I do want to talk about her, because a couple people were asking me about this, and I want to go ahead and set the record straight. <clears throat> Nobushi. Her name is Takamura Ayu. All right, so get ready for this. She was originally what you might call a woman of the willow, and I took the term from the book Sh um, Shogun. What she essentially was is it's not... A prostitute necessarily could be kind of the same thing but they were paid for more than just sex they were also paid for entertainment she can sing she can dance she can play multiple instruments um, she could just serve you tea you paid for her services and she would do what you wanted for her, for you and she was very very good at it in fact she was she was considered one of the most beautiful women in all of the mire even though she was just from the lowly village of Amaku well Turns out that before Tomoe took over Amaku, when she was much younger, like, I'm talking like young teens younger, she was actually um, hired by a few daimyo outside of Amaku to go with them, you know, into battle, you know, join our group, follow us, we're going to uh, go fight, and you're just going to entertain me and entertain my men, keep us entertained during this long engagement. And she says, okay, so she goes with them. And the daimyo and all of his forces just get routed. They just get destroyed. It's a very it's a very big shame because then they go right to where Tomoe is hiding and capture her and offer her over to one of the leaders of the Iron Legion named Derek of Faldmarsh. Derek of Faldmarsh is one of the chiefs of the Iron Legion and pretty well known for his bravery in battle. And he decides that she is pretty for a heathen. We'll keep her. And so he takes her as his personal prisoner, and everyone knows what he means by that. So he has her tied up in his tent, and he'll take her back with him to Ashfeld once the battle's over. She's tied up in his tent for two days, with very little to eat or drink, and is used for things we will not speak of on this live stream. She's lost all hope. She doesn't think she'll ever see home again. She doesn't think she'll ever get, be able to go back to the mire. Until along comes a young warden who busts her out because he can't stand what Derek is doing. It goes against all the oaths the knights are supposed to take and all the things the Iron Legion says to be upholding. He sets her free and helps her escape back to the mire and then goes back to the Iron Legion to face his punishment for defying Derek. That warden's name was William of Oxshire. Yes. 
Yes! That was William of Oxshire's first meeting with Ayu. She became smitten with him. She became very invested in his professional career as a warden and wanted to know how he was doing, where he was stationed, what land he was from. She trained herself up as a Nobushi so that she would never be put in that helpless situation again and so that she could be of more use to the warden in the future. Though she never admitted to anyone about her secret affections for a warden, which would have been seen as awful at the time period, she did love him and wanted to make him happy. She wanted to meet him again and was willing to do anything to do it. When I, when um, Tomoe took over Amaku as its daimyo, she volunteered quite often to go on trips that would take her near Asheville just so that she could try to get any information she could about William because she wanted to see him again. Ah, let's get rid of this guy. Come on, come on. Oh, shit. No. You're just going to keep doing that, aren't you, big boy? Okay, you're not going to keep doing that. Dang it. Ah, oh, no. Dang it. Frack, frack, frack and frack. Dang it. Okay. Okay, so let me read what y'all wrote because I bet y'all wrote a lot after that. Wait, what? Okay, is, ta is Takamaku the team bard? Um, it's Takamura Ayu. Takamura. Okay, a lady of the night. Got to keep the moral ups, morale up somehow. Laugh my ass on no better way to keep the morale of the men up than the sight of a pretty woman. You'd be surprised. Um, he wants to play chess with her, right? Sure. Is that war? Is that war Warden Lord William? Yes! knew it. Yeah, he wants to play with that chest. Keeping the idea of her being a low-class peasant, but also being quite skilled in most trades? I love it. Nobu X Warden is one of the best ships, to be honest. Can someone draw that scene of the Warden saving her? If someone wants to draw that out, feel free. I'd love that. I think that'd be great. But yes, that is the relationship between um, Takamura Ayu and Knight Warden William of Akshire. And, if, and no, I will not reveal how their relationship pans out in, in the end of the story. Trust me, it will come into play. That will have a bearing on the story. I look forward to that. But I'm not going to reveal anything. Get away from my flag, Zerker. Dang it. Anyway. Alright, so. Now you know about the Nobushian Warden. All right, I hope y'all enjoyed that idea. I hope y'all enjoy what, what, what that's all about, because I had fun coming up with that. That's a fun idea. I even wrote a little short story about Nobushian Warden, which I might read out loud for y'all sometime. Nobushi now, unless y'all have more questions about that. If y'all have more questions, go over there and try to help out over here. But then again, I'm up against a Hitakiri, who have the... Berserker, you don't get to play that game. You don't get to play that game. Guys, start dropping stuff on it. There we go. Yeah, sorry guys, I know the lag is terrible. That's why I said you really shouldn't play with me while I'm doing these, because the lag is already bad enough as it is. Come on. Alright, let me kill this guy. I saw that I just got a comment. I'll take a look at that. Alright, so the comment was, what inspires you to make these characters? When I try to write characters, they tend to just seem like part of myself and struggle with it a bit. Um, so... How I come up with characters, I literally just think on it for a while and determine what would fit in the story, and I often come up with like inspirational ideas based on things that I've seen or heard about, or sometimes they just come to me. But if you're asking me how I keep the characters unique and not just reflections of myself, that takes practice, and what I tend to do is I have interviews with the characters. I know that sounds weird, but I pretend that the characters are... Oh, shoot. Get away from me. 
I'll let you heal that guy. Let me heal up. Let me heal up. But yeah, I I have interviews with the characters. I basically sit down with the character sheet and I just say, let me ask you some questions. How do you feel about this? What do you enjoy about this? What's your goal in life? What do you want to do with yourself? I try to make them all unique. I try to make every character somehow diverse. I want them to speak with their own voice. I don't want them to just be reflections of me. That'd be boring. You know, I want these characters to stand for something greater than just me. Sometimes, yeah, it's nice to create a character who can represent me. Like, the Raven Knight is a character that I think represents me. Um, the character I created, Tomaki, is a character that I think represents me. But sometimes I want characters that aren't me. I want characters that are better than me, worse than me, of higher moral standing, of lower moral standing. I want characters who have seen the world, done things that I wish I could do. I want to create worlds, guys. That's what I want to do. I want to create a world. I'll tell you a secret about me. One of the things that I've always wanted to do, this has been a goal, I want to create a story that does what Star Wars and Lord of the Rings did. A story that captures the audience that it gains so well that people want to build off of it. That people want to create more around it. I created a story on one of my accounts on DeviantArt called New Epic, which is the st which is a post-apocalyptic but kind of fantasy story. And I wanted to make it open so that other people could add their own take, add their own adventures, add their own ideas, their own characters. I want to create something that captures the minds of people. I want something that can bring people together and, you know, something great. That's my goal. I want to do something that rallies people. Why aren't you dropping shit? Dang it. It got through. Let me deal with this, Shinobi, and then I'll read your comments. Sorry, Shinobi. Not working. Okay, anyway. Um, so, did she give up on her thought tendency to help her s to keep herself for William? Yep, that's why she became an Obushi and not a woman of the willow. She left that occupation to save herself for William because she, she actually feels kind of self-conscious. She's kind of like, oh man, if he finds out that I used to be a woman of the willow, he may not be interested in me anymore. Freaking Hitakiris. Come on. Bad timing. Bad timing. Good timing. Good. All right. Um, as much as I respect, um, as much as I respect the Warden Nobu ship, but there is only one true man for Nobushi, and he has incredibilities. Actually, I ship um, uh, the Centurion with Jormungandr for obvious reasons. Jormungandr and. Uh, you're running under and Centurion, all the way. Oh, y'all are on my team. Dang it, I am stupid. <laughs> um, at the ending of the story, I'm sorry, Nobushi, I already have someone in my heart pulls out the Bible. <laughs> That'd be funny. Shugoki. Hey, it seems stupid, but it works. It's not stupid. But if it works, it's not stupid. Hello. Hello, the Bloodborne Hunter. No. No. Dang it. Um, that interview idea sounds interesting. I'll have to try that. So I ever so I ever draw the Aztec faction will I be put it? If you do draw the Aztec faction, please share it in Discord. I'd love to see it. Um if so, where is the link? I will put the link to the Discord again in this uh video. I'll put it in the description. Yo, me too. I'm trying to make my own story at somewhat fantasy post medieval pre steampunk renaissance ish. <laughs> That's a great way to describe my, my story too. Who with Shugoki? I have never figured out who I would put with Shugoki. In my opinion, Shugoki's married to his work. <laughs> Question about Discord. Are we allowed to share our own lore based things there? Sure, I don't mind that. I do not mind that at all. 
if y'all want to add your own characters to the factions I've mentioned, like the Noble Legion or the or the Vikings Froffenfell, feel free. I'd be happy to have y'all do that. That'd be very nice of you. Um, just let me know, and feel free to share. I'll make a separate channel dedicated to just that. How about that? Just for lore discussions. Stuff that you'd like to add to the lore. If you'd like your characters to interact with my characters, I wouldn't mind that either. I think that'd be very nice. I, I might even add it to the story. The story's ever-evolving. Come on, guys. Let's beat this boy. Let's beat this big boy. Let's beat this big boy! Got him! Nice. And now our eyes are glowing. Let's go kill some people. Come on! So, same with Hito. Married to work. Actually, okay. I need to move on to the next character because we need to talk about Hito in a minute. But first, Aramusha. Remember how I mentioned that the Emperor sent Tomoe to go to Donyoku province to get um, uh, Jubei out? To get Jubei, the daimyo there, out and to help her? Well, when she got there, she found out that he was currently engaged with the Iron Legion at the time because, get this, he wanted to steal... I um, Ashfeld territory from them. Now, the Emperor was trying to start a non-aggression pact. He didn't want to start a bunch of hostilities with the Knights right now. He wanted to strengthen the Empire. So, Jubei doing this was in direct violation of the non-aggression pact. So, this was going against the Emperor. This was being the aggressor. It was wrong on all counts. So, pretty pissed off. And then it gets worse, because guess what? Remember Hope, the peacekeeper? She shows up. It turns out that she had been sent to Donyoku to try to reason with Jubei to back off so that they could unite against the orcs. Because remember, she can speak Japanese. She's been stationed in the mire for a while. Let me deal with this guy. So she tries to reason with Jubei, and instead of listening to her, he tries to have her executed. And this pisses Tomoe right off, so she challenges him to a duel. They fight, Tomoe wins, Jubei is taken and arrested and brought before the Emperor. And here's the kicker, ready for the big twist? Jubei is actually the Emperor's son. Yes, he was the Emperor's son and was granted his own province a long time ago. And now he's disgraced that honor. He got too big for his britches, and now he's lost it. The Emperor um, sheds his title as Daimyo, sheds his title as Samurai of the Dawn Empire, and doesn't even grant him the honor of seppuku. says, no, you have to go and live the life of a Ronin as an Aramusha. You do not get the honor of seppuku. Reflect on what you've done, and you can never again call yourself my son. So Jubei becomes an Aramusha, and he leaves the mire completely. He heads off into the rest of Heathmore, going from place to place, challenging orcs wherever he comes across them, and protecting other villages to try to learn humility and to learn compassion for other peoples, because that was what turned him off and made him lose favor with his father in the first place. That is the story of the Aramusha Jubei. All right. What if you don't have the colors for your faction? Do we have to level up, or can you choose different colors? When I'm done with this, I will go over what colors can be used. Um, because I've got a few suggested colors that you can use. All right, let's... Uh... Come on, guys, do some damage. Do some damage. What's popping? I don't know. I love when I time that just right. I don't always. Faked. Punked. Slash, cut up and step. All right, thanks for the thanks for the compliment, man. It is a fun plot twist. I love this stuff. All right, and now the one we've all been waiting for, Hitakiri. So I'm gonna set you up with. Uh, uh, I'm gonna give you a mental image to think on. Mental image to think on. 
group of orcs, right? Wandering into a snowy um, village in the mire near the border of Valkenheim. When they walk in, they see that there are n there's no one there except for a single woman. A woman ma carrying a huge battle axe and a fox mask over her face. They don't think anything of her. And they charge her. But what they don't know is that this woman, her name is Kiku Noyuki. The chrysanthemum of the snow. Now get this. Okay, get ready for this. <clears throat> Kiku used to be a simple peasant woman who lived in this and lived ju just at the edge of the town of Amaku. Now, at the time, she was a young woman. This was before Tomoe took over Amaku. Didn't have any credit to her name. She was not samurai. She was not a noble. She was just a peasant woman. She was a nobody. Well, there was a huge battle near her home with the Vikings. And a single raider managed to escape the violence, but he was seriously injured and was going to die. She couldn't just turn him away, you know, that wouldn't be very neighborly. So she decides to take him in and treat his injuries, but then turn him over to the daimyo to let him do with um, the raider as he saw fit. Deal with this. Whee! Okay, so, let's drop this. So, she treats him, and slowly they start to form a relationship. Eventually they fall in love. The raider stays hidden with her. Um, and they have a baby together. Yeah, things are looking up for these two. It's a very nice, happy situation. Until the daimyo finds out. The daimyo says that she's committed a grievous crime, and now he must be put to death as well as the baby. Daimyo sends his warriors to execute the injured raider and to kill the baby. Kiku watches her own husband and child get butchered before her eyes. She loses her mind, grabs her husband's axe, and uses it to slaughter the warriors who came before her. No one knows how this simple peasant woman knew how to use that axe, but what they believe is that she had been blessed in that moment by a Shinigami and given the power of death itself. Dubbed a Hitakiri, a manslayer, she was also dubbed a criminal, but there is no samurai in the mire who's willing to go after her to bring her in because they all believe that death itself has sided with her and she will kill anyone and anything that gets in her way, be it samurai, Viking or night. And so when the orcs show up, all she doesn't hear orcs. All she hears is the screaming cries of her baby and the pleads of her husband. And she will butcher. That is Kiku. Now before you ask, yes, she will have a more relevant part in the story than just kill, 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 kill. Actually, it's kind of funny. When she learns about um, the Nobushi, I use affection for the warden, she actually sympathizes with it. It's actually kind of cute. All right, so let's read what y'all have to say. Um, I'm always looking for input about my own ideas. I love feedback, so I might be sharing a bit. Hope that isn't a bother. Feel free to share in the Discord, man. I'm happy to have it. When you say the story ever expanded, does that mean you don't know the ending of the story? Oh, I know the ending of the story. I just don't know how I progressed to that point. I'm like Ichiro Oda, the creator of One Piece. Oda said famously, I know how One Piece is going to end, but I didn't know every aspect of the story leading up to it. I'm kind of the same way. I don't know how it's going to end either. So, I mean, I'm, no, scratch that. I know how it's going to end, I just don't know how it's going to reach that end. Um, very good. Now that I think about it, a conqueror in Aramucha is basically a criminal in the eyes of their own people, somewhat dishonored. Yes. It's spelled Kiku, Keku. Sorry, I'm not good with Asian names. K-I-K-U. The first one is correct. Kiku. The best way to remember with Asian names is, um, vowels all have the same sound. They never change. And I will always be, will always sound E. E. Um, and the letter E will always sound like E. Eh. There will never be any change in that. So, Kiku is K-I-K-U. If you add an E, it's Keku. So, that's the best way to remember that. And Kiku means chrysanthemum. Ooh, got some stuff. Yay! Okay, so, now y'all know um, all of the samurai. 
please let me know your thoughts on the Samurai. Before I go, I will make a few announcements here, and I will also show you what colors you can use for the different factions. Yeah, thanks, Mom. The, the Heath Kiri is supposed to be badass. Okay, so let's go to Heroes real quick, and I will show you what you can do. All right, so firstly, for the Knights... The Noble Legion is blue and white color. So good examples of this, you can use Sea Ice, which was the Frost Wind Festival. You can use Frost Wind, which is another good one. This is from the Frost Wind Festival as well. You can use Shades of Kaiden. This is a good choice. You can use Sea Raven. I personally like this one for obvious reasons. Sea Raven is actually a really good one. I recommend this one highly for the Noble Legion. Sea Raven. Horcos Crystal Sky is okay. Not my favorite. Again, Sea Raven is my favorite. Another good one is Storm. This is an early one that you get at just at getting level 1. So you should all have this one. Storm is a good one for the Noble Legion. Night Defense is okay. It has too much emphasis on the white for me, but it's okay. And the other good one, where is it? No, not Vineyard's fine, but that's not the one I was thinking of. Armada, no, where is it? Shorelines, no. Shadows is a good one. I like Shadows. Patrol. Patrol is the one I was thinking of. Patrol's a great one. So Patrol is a really good one. I think that one's probably the best one you can get. Um, Orchard is a good one. Patrol and Orchard, two really great ones. So those would be the ones that I recommend for the Noble Legion. Again, that's Orchard, Patrol, and Storm. Orchard, Patrol, and Storm. And Storm, everyone should have access to if they've gotten to level one with their Night Hero. Not even Rep 1, level one. So orchard, so orchard, storm, and patrol. Uh, so Hito has a raider axe as her weapon. It's not a raider's axe, but it's people named her Hito here because she used an axe to kill them all. So she adopted the axe as her weapon. Thank you, the mighty midget. Appreciate that. Um, the mighty midget says much love for what you have going on here in terms of universe. It's top notch. Thank you. Pig on the wing, Tomoe, and t and. Takamaru eventually argue about will, don't they? Oh, well, um, Ayu and Tomoe will discuss this, and they will have an argument about it, but it won't go the way you're thinking. So anyway, back to what I was saying. So those of you who want to create Noble Legion Knights, those are your colors for the Noble Legion. All right? Next is the Vikings. Do -do 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 oh, wrong one. We're going Warlord. The, the Viking colors are going to be somewhat green. Good examples for this would be... Honestly, Iron Legion isn't a bad choice, but another good one would be... Where are you? Heavy Rain isn't a bad one. I like this one okay. Got to scroll down a little bit to find all the good ones. Radioactive Decay isn't a bad one either. I like that one fine. And you can get that one at level 1 with a Viking as well. Lakeside is excellent. I like Lakeside. You get that one at Rep 3, level 12. Lakeside's an excellent one. Shades of green and yellow are what you want for the Vikings. For um, Hrafenfell, the Hrafenfell colors are going to be that. Um, another good one. Ooh, Dream is a good one. I like Dream for Hrafenfell. For Hrafenfell colors, you want Dream especially. That's Reputation 14, level 10. I know that not all your Vikings will be there, but at Reputation 14, if you can get Dream, this is a good one. So that is the colors of Hrafenfell. And then finally, for the Samurai. Okay, so there are three good ones you can get with the Samurai. Again, the, go the colors here are going to be red and gold. The color here that I'm using for the Kensei is Tanner. Tanner is a great one. But another good one is... Scroll down. Pretty sure I passed it, but whatever. That, that, it was back up there. Sunwine. Sunwine's another really good one. Um, so Tanner and Sunwine and Dream are all good ones to use for Amaku. 
And as you can see, Tomoe here, not Tomoe, sorry, Ayu here is wearing Sunwine. And I won't go into the Wu Lin just yet, that's for the next video, but I will talk about who the Wu Lin are and what role they play in the story. I think you will actually really like where they stand. All right, so. Um, can't wait. I love the videos about the history of the characters. Uh, oh, well, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, can't wait for Highlander Orc Bear Knuckle Fist fight. I can't either. Hey, nice to be on your stream again. Nice to have you. What are your samurai character ages? Tomoe is in her 30s. Um, Kido is in his uh, mid-30s. Ayu is in her late 20s. Okomo is in his uh, 40s. Jubei is 48. No one knows how old the Shinobi is. And Kiku is in her late 40s. Now you know. Okay, guys, so last thing. A um, couple of y'all were asking questions about um, merchandising and stuff like that. I've decided I will go ahead with that. Um, I will let y'all know how that goes. I will tell y'all what I do when that goes live and when I've put all that together. So I will let you know about that. Also, um, a couple of y'all have been asking a great deal about when the next uh, Heroes in History is going to be and when the next chapter of the story is going to be. Last week, my work schedule was so crazy, I didn't have enough time to really sit down and work on those scripts. But I'm working on them now, and hopefully I will have some new videos coming out this week, but I also have a few Halloween-specific things to do. Speaking of Halloween-specific, I'm doing my next Monsters Unmasked video on Frankenstein's monster which I will be releasing hopefully next week as well. I've got a lot of stuff I want to release um, hopefully before October ends. So I'm really excited about that. Um, look forward to releasing it. Um, I'm glad that you guys are so excited about this channel. I'm so excited about how it's growing too, guys. We are so close to the goal. And a lot of it is... A lot of it is just, it's because of y'all. It's because of what y'all have done. Y'all mean the world to me. Y'all support has mean the world to me. Thank you all so, so very much. Tomorrow, I will be working the morning shift. And when I come back that evening, I will get to work on releasing something new for you guys. Um, I love to read y'all's conversation in the Discord. Speaking of that, a couple of y'all were saying that you want to create emblems for the Order of the Raven. I am making the Order of the Raven official now. Um... I, we are now going to call our community the Ordo Corax, or Order of the Raven, or the Raven Legion, whichever you prefer. I say Order of the Raven only because it can be all-encompassing, it can encompass all factions. If y'all want to create an emblem specifically for the Raven faction, um, that would be awesome. I would love that. And what we can do, since some of y'all have already started doing that, um, make your emblems, post them on Discord, um, and we, y'all, we will vote for a winner. I will pick a day that votes are all due, that you all vote on who the winner you think should be. And then once the winner is chosen, I will choose it as the, as the faction emblem for the, um, Raven Legion or the Order of the Raven, and we will make it all official. Um, the Order of the Raven guy is going to be awesome. So excited. Um, and I saw a couple of people even making emblems for the Noble Legion. That's really cool too. If y'all want to make emblems for everything else, please do. I'll open up a little channel for y'all to post that kind of stuff, like stuff for the fanfic or stuff for the story. And we'll see how all that goes. But anyway, guys, um, what are the colors of the order? Order. Okay. That's a good question. The colors of the order. I haven't decided yet. So I'll let y'all be creative. I'll let y'all decide what colors y'all want to do for the order of the Raven. Um, and we'll see what we do from there. If I decide on color schemes, then I'll let you know. But right now, I have no color scheme specifically. Black, um, red, and maybe something else would be cool. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but thanks for asking. Um, anyway, guys, that about wraps it up. Been on for about an hour now. So I think that's a good place to call it. Um, again... Thank you all so much for helping me get this far. Let's keep the channel going. I am so excited for what's coming later, and I will talk to you guys later in my next live stream. I will talk about the Wulin faction and who my characters are in that. Until then, I will see y'all next time. Take care, guys.